So I'm walking here around the Hollywood District of Portland and um, taking, making images of these um, quote-unquote contrails. <clears throat> In particular, I'm noticing the ones that start and stop. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to try to research if there's some sort of <clears throat> the word plausible deniability is coming to me right now, but explanation as to why for example, this one right here. So you can see this plane, the tip of it is moving, right? So there is an aircraft, it's an, it's not visible. The aircraft itself is not visible to the naked eye at all. Like I cannot see it. Um, and I'm sure it doesn't show up on the phone either. And if I zoom in, you still can't see it. So it's pretty far away, I guess. So the typical explanation is that these are um, ice crystals condensation from ice crystals. So my question is, right here, you know, it doesn't look like it's changed a lot in altitude. Why does this suddenly start? Why does this trail suddenly start right here? Clearly, the aircraft itself has been flying in a trajectory across the sky. It didn't just appear out of nowhere right here where you see the trail beginning. So it's a cold day out. It's November. Here's some more on the other side, kind of similar thing going on. They just end right here, all three of them just end right here. Um, doesn't look like there's been a change of altitude of the aircraft, the trails just end. And <clears throat> these trails are persistent all the way across the sky. They seem to be a lower altitude. Now look, this one just actually changed I think since I started making this video, I think part of it looked like, looks like it dropped down compared to the other part. Now I've watched these for hours on end. Now here it ended right there. It's, it's not moving forward anymore either. So it stops and it starts without any noticeable change in elevation of the aircraft. Okay, here's another thing. These three trails right here, I think we can agree that these are trails and not regular clouds. Um, are staying pretty steady. They're fluffing out. Um, they're not breaking apart, but right above it, this trail is sort of falling. Part of it's falling down compared to the other part. And then it, it does it again right here. And then, of course, it disappears. Now, I can't see any aircraft or any trail after this. So this shows you that there's aircraft up here that are just completely invisible to the naked eye. You cannot see that aircraft. Once the trail ended, there's no sign of the aircraft, no visible sign of the aircraft was ever, is ever there, was there. So, as I've said so many times before, the behavior of these quote-unquote contrails does not seem like it's congruent with what the explanation of a contrail is, which is con condensed water vapor. You know, it's condensed into ice crystals because of altitude and temperature. If that were the case, it doesn't make sense if there's no appreciable change in altitude for them to start and stop like this. Or if the change is, you know, it looks like it's gone, if anything, it's gone from higher to lower, right? So why does it all of a sudden start way up here, way up high, go on for a while, there's maybe a slight decrease in altitude, and then it just ends. So if it ended because it was decreasing in altitude and there was a temperature change, then it doesn't make sense that it would have started here. It should have started earlier when, you know, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And then this, right? This is a lower altitude. That, it just doesn't make sense. So I'm going to look this up and see if there's some sort of alternative explanation as to why this could happen. I mean, I know that it's not exact. I know that I believe, right? I believe based on observing these things for years, that these are not, <clears throat> this isn't exhaust from just nat It's just not naturally concurring. And also the changes that happen are not natural. The changes that are going on seems to, you know, I mean, maybe the wind is different up here than it is down there, but so here's the other side. Here's another. I can actually see this aircraft. That very thin trail right there. I can actually see a tiny little white speck in the sky. And then here's some more that just start and end. So this is 
<clears throat> 42nd and um, over there, 42nd Northeast Sandy, over here, the Hollywood District of Portland. Yeah, I'm in the Hollywood District of Portland. I'm right, that's the dollar store right there, the back of the dollar store. So, um, and that's Sandy over there. And this is 43rd. So 43rd between Sandy and I don't know what that is, Halsey. Yeah, Sandy and Halsey. So that, I'm not sure if that's an apartment building. I think it's an apartment building. Providence Hospital is up in that direction as well. So there's a drone. Very obvious drone above that apartment building. Is this the same drone that I see over my apartment building or near my apartment building? I think this is what I'm talking about. I think it might be. I think this might be a drone that actually follows me personally around town, although I'm not certain. brightness, magnitude, whatever you want to call it. It's not a star. It's not a star. Does it look like a star? Do you see any other stars that look like that? There's a moving aircraft over there. It's a drone. It's a stationary drone. I think that there's multiple drones. I think there's different types of drones in the sky over here, you know, including drones that move around like aircraft, like airplanes. This one's hovering. So when I say something's being covered up, that it's not secret, it's covered up. That's what I'm talking about. This is not subtle. So I'm now at 16th Avenue Max Station. There is an um, aircraft up there making tight little circles right above the Max Station itself. It's got red lights on it. Sometimes there's a white light flashing with red and white lights on it. So here it comes around again. No, it's going off in another direction. So there is a drone. Has the drone moved around? Is it in the same place that it was when I was down at Hollywood? I'm not sure. I can't really tell for sure. It seems like it moved, but maybe maybe it's so high that it's just like a star. It appears to be everywhere, but I can't tell. It's in the same general location. I mean, same general part of the sky. There's others up there, smaller ones, but that's the bright one. So I'm going to just climb up to the top here. See, now it looks like... Now it looks like that drone is above the um, antenna tower that's next to a... Um, heating and cooling plant, but it is the same general location, there's a storage space, the antenna tower, actually that's the antenna tower, it's got a plane flying behind it, or a drone, got a red light on it, so it's not there, it's above, now it looks like it's above this apartment building, it could be, it could be in the same place that it was before, because, right, could be. That's the hospital, the lights on, right? This part of the hospital, Providence Hospital, I think. There's an antenna tower visible also next to it, flashing the lights on and off. Doesn't look like it's showing up on the camera too well. So was this in the same place the whole time? I can't tell. To me, it looks like it's moved, but maybe not. Maybe it's just an optical illusion.
Okay, now that drone that I pointed out last night is visible. The one that I said was, is that it? Or is that moving? No one's moving. Well, it's in the same location, sort of the same location, but that's a moving one. It's the same coloring and the same size and the same location, but it's that one's moving where the other one was stationary. So there's the there's the one that's might follow me around, might be following me around. There has been, um, there's that one that's been circling around the Mac station, coming around. Looks like it's about to circle over me, personally. I feel so special. So I think this is also a drone, the thing that's coming this way. There's another one visible, a stationary one, barely visible. It may not show up on the camera, I can see it on the screen, but it may not show up in the final result. So this one now has a um, green light on one side and a... And a, it's got a bunch of different lights, green and white. Three lights. Most visible, but there's some flashing lights also in addition. So it looks like it's about to fly past the stationary drone. No, not quite, but kind of put it near by. So it seems to me pretty drones? typical to see. Huh? Drones? Don't, don't you think? Yeah, those are drones. Yeah. yeah. Those are drones, big time. Yep. You're the first person I've met that's ever acknowledged that. <laughs> so we finally got one other person in Portland. admitted. Hell yeah, those are drones. With regards to drones following me personally, um, there's been, when I, when they were, when, when the reveal, because these were revealed to me 2017 by making themselves really obvious. Um, <laughs> When that first happened, it was a real obvious following. There was a really obvious following of a drone. It was much lower in the sky than these are. And I think it was actually, I was able to see a little bit of a structure of it. And that particular one was a traditional drone type structure where it was like a hexagon or a pentagon shape. I don't think these, I don't think that one's shaped like this. I think that one's a probably, if you were to look at it in on the ground in daylight. I think it would look like an airplane. Um, the reason why, there's a few reasons why I think that. One, one of the reasons is that I, at one point, all these starlight drones were lit up with two lights and it looked like a lights on two different wings. Um, so, <clears throat> anyway, one was following me it had a pentagon or a hexagon type structure and it was a lot lower than this so it was obviously following me and this is when I was just figuring out about the implants the biological implanted devices and so they were making it so they were tugging on them like with this magnetic tugging sensation I could actually feel these things in my body pulling and also I'd feel like these little pings uh, sometimes to let me know they were pinging me with something. Um, there's an, another moving one. So, moving stationary. Both visible. And that drone, when it followed me home, um, it was like, an, it was it reminded me of that movie, The Red Balloon. And it's been a while since I've seen that movie, like the idea of something that follows you everywhere. Um, and I was, I could see that it was actually ambulating with me, like it would move at my pace walking down the street. And if I stopped, I was trying to, I could see that I'd turn around and it would be moved, it followed me home. And, um... If I stopped, 
it would stop. And then I'd walk a little further and it would follow me further. And so I was trying to like, um, I was trying to actually trick it a couple times. I'd walk, 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 and stop really fast and turn around. And I could see it actually stop. So I suspect that was a demonstration to show that this is actually going on and usually not that obvious. This is a bit obvious right here. So now it appears like this drone is right over 60th and Northeast Gleason. So I do think it's moving. And how are they tracking me? Like at the time I thought, I thought it was tracking me visually that when I, when I first saw these things going on, you know, it's obvious that they're connected to these biomedical implants. That's what they're picking up on. It's not cell phones, because it happens whether or not I have a cell phone. So here we are. It's the intersection. And this is going on in the sky. Now notice that the moving aircraft right now does not have a flashing light on it. I think that normally aircraft at night, flying at night, I'm not certain, but when I was reading up on stuff, it looked like aircraft flying at night are supposed to flash. This one just looks like a steady, it looks exactly like the stationary one, but it's moving. Now the light is fading on the moving one. Now it's invisible just faded out. Can't see it anymore. Stationary one's still there. So that's, this looks like another sort of giveaway game that's being played. It's invisible, right? It's still there. I just saw the light fade out and disappear. It just happened. So it's still flying up there. I said it's supposed to be flashy. It's now not only flashy, there's no light on it at all. Whoosh. And here I am now in the, um, now I'm in the courtyard of the apartment complex where I live. And the drone, it looks like it's right above the tree next to my apartment building. So it looks like it's essentially right over the building that I stay in. And by the, there's another moving aircraft, very faint, flashing. Looking like it's also going in circles. And lots of stars, you know, lots of drones visible actually right now, but mostly faint. Too fake to show up on the screen, so I mostly just, you know, when I make these videos, I don't usually talk about those, <clears throat> talk about the ones that show up on the screen, but I see a hundred of them easy. There's a formation that looks like Cassiopeia, but it's not really Cassiopeia, I don't think, because the reason why, you know, you look at these, <clears throat> there's booth constellations. Um, they aren't really lined up right with other constellations, for one thing. There's an Orion, there's a sort of a Cassiopeia, and there's a, um, sometimes there's a Big Dipper. Uh, I don't see anything like that. I don't see any Orion right now. I don't see any Big Dipper. Just, you know, random, a random bright drone and a bunch of faint ones in no particular formation that I can recognize other than the almost Cassiopeia. Um, and so what you see is that the magnitudes are not quite right. They'll, they're close. But there's a lot of detail in, in real constellations that doesn't show up. In the, they're good. They're close. If you, don't, if you don't look at them too close, they look like the real thing. But if you sit and you really look at them and you really compare the two, you can see differences. And most of the differences, some of it is scale. Orion, the, the simplest one and the most realistic looking one when I've seen it has been the Big Dipper. Um, but there's not enough variation between the different stars and the constellation of magnitude and things like that. Um, yeah, Big Dipper is close but not exact. Orion is missing a lot of details, plus I've never seen Taurus. For some reason they <coughs> they have Orion but no Taurus. 
and you know back in when I lived out in the country every time I looked at Orion now now that drone is actually hidden behind my apartment building with the Orion I would always see Taurus I could always see usually see Cassiopeia if I could see Orion I could definitely see Taurus there it is so it's not above my apartment building it's above it's a little bit so with regards to where I am located this drone has always been to the um, right now it looks like it's over Mount Tabor kind of it's always been to the, the um, southeast of me a little bit so I th I suspect that what this thing is doing is moving and I suspect that it's got some type of mathematical <clears throat> uh, instruction that keeps it located you know certain distance from the implants that are in my body specifically that's what I think is going on I just walked in after looking at the drones outside and I hear the Geiger counter alarm going off so I walk in the door So I've been home for a couple of minutes. The cat is missing because the cat, before I left, the cat was being attacked with directed energy weapons and screaming. She hides, tries to hide from the directed energy weapons. The Geiger counter is still going off. The numbers are higher now. The cat is hiding. Roxy. So it started out, her head was shaking, like it was just shaking. It looked like it was shaking involuntarily. And then started with these, whatever they're doing there, her ears that are making her scream. So it's like, a, it's a trauma process. It's been going on off and on all day, but it's been worse tonight. I mean, I haven't been here a lot of the day today, but um, usually it's worse at night. 1 31 a.m. right now I was just trying to go to sleep and it's just getting worse and worse for Roxy see what the inside of her ear looks like. Her ears didn't look too bad when I came home, but I don't know what she was going through. No, it's, uh, some of it's visible and some of it you can't see. So they do look redder. And when I came home, they definitely look like they were a bit of an injury. Right before I was gone most of the day, right before I left, she, this was happening to her too. When I came home, she was hiding. So 
listening to the internet yesterday and still being up one thirty in the morning. Year, man. It's so much it suffers. This is animal abuse. Intentional infliction of emotional distress on me and this abuse of torture of an animal. So these are crimes. Use of an animal is a crime. I've been doing this to you all year long. It's November now. It's really been going on longer, but I mean, it's been extreme for the past year. It's been really off and on throughout our life. She's been tortured with effects to her skin. One time she lost almost all her hair, all her fur, or a large amount of her fur. And I can't remember, she must have had scabs on her body. This was before I knew that it was biomedical implants. She had scabs, she lost her fur, I took her to the vet. She probably was her life was probably endangered because she was getting secondary infections from all the wounds. I finally asked my brother for money to take her to the vet. And um, she was given medicine and she got better, but it wasn't from the medicine. It was fake because they were keeping up the charade of, you know, these being some sort of natural conditions. That's one of the ways that they keep up the charade is you take it to the doc, take, go to the doctor, take your animal to the doctor and the condition improves based on the, after the doctor gives you some kind of treatment, but it's just a, it's just theater. Once, once I figured out it was biomedical implants, they didn't really bother to, sometimes, but most of the time they don't really bother to. There's other times I went to the doctor myself and didn't, the doctor prescribed something, I didn't even take it, and my condition improved as if I had taken it. I don't think that would happen. I don't know. It's, you know. It's this thing, none of this, this is all about what somebody decides to do. This isn't about the natural disease process. So if they want to make like the doctor's um, 
curing you, then they may get a cure. The doctor's curing you. If they don't, then they won't. 